Hello and welcome to this video on how to estimate a confirmatory factor model in M plus with fixed factor variances. My name is Christian Geiser. I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. On Tuesdays I usually present issues related to the M plus software and on Thursdays I talk about more general issues in multivariate statistical analysis including structural equation modeling, multi-level modeling, latent class analysis and other types of multivariate models. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter. In this video, I want to talk about two alternative ways to identify the metric of factors in confirmatory factor analysis and structural equation modeling in the M plus software. If you're already familiar with M plus, for factor analysis, then you might know that the default in M plus for a factor model like the one that I have the syntax for here is that the factor loadings of the first indicators that are listed behind each by statement will be fixed to one to set the metric of the latent factor and identify the model. So this means in my model here where I have two factors F1 and F2 the factor loadings of y1 and y3 will both be fixed to 1 by default in M+. And this is usually a way to identify a model that works well, but in some cases it may not work so well. So sometimes when you have variables that have very different metrics that come in very different units of measurement and have very different variances, then that Kind, that um, approach to identifying a factor model may not work so well. And so therefore, in this video, I also want to talk about an alternative way to identify a model like this, and that is by fixing the factor variances instead of fixing factor loadings. Now, let's first of all take a look at what M plus provides us with when we go with the default. So this is the default specification of factor models where we simply say F1 by Y1, Y2, F2 by Y3, Y4. And then as we will see, the factor loadings of the first indicators that are listed after each by statement will automatically be fixed at one. So let's take a look at that by running this model. Then we can see, first of all, the model fits well, we get a chi-square value of 0.165, one degree of freedom, the p-value is not significant at the 0.05 level. So this model fits the data well. And then when we scroll down, we can see under the model results, first of all, the unstandardized parameter estimates. And so you can see that y1 has a loading of exactly 1.000. And from the fact that the standard error is also zero and that you get these 999 values for the Z statistic and the P value that this parameter was not a free parameter in the model. It was fixed to one and therefore does not have a standard error and then also does not have a test statistic or P value. And that's why you find these 999 values printed here because that loading is not a free parameter, it's a fixed parameter. And the same is true for Y3. You can see here also that this loading is exactly 1.0 with no standard error and no test statistic. The second loading is freely estimated. It has a standard error, has a test statistic and a p-value for both factors. So that's one way to identify this model. And then what M plus does is it freely estimates the factor variances instead of those loadings here that are fixed. But an alternative way to identify the model is by fixing the variances instead of the loading. So how do we do that? Let's go back to our input file. And what we can do is we can free up the constraint parameters, those loadings, by putting an asterisk behind y1 and y3 in the by statements, and that will cause M plus to free up these loadings. So the star means, oh, this is a free parameter. So this is previously by default, this was a constraint parameter, and the asterisk, so to say, overrides this constraint and 
overrides the default in M plus. So now in this case, we would have free loadings and free variances right now. And so the model now would be under identified because there would be too many parameters to estimate and there would be no appropriate constraints in place to set the factor metric. And so therefore this would not work. How can we now fix the factor variances so that we can again have an identified model? So that can be done by typing F1 hyphen F2 at one semicolon. This command tells M plus that both F1 and F2 have a factor variance that is now fixed to one. So instead of fixing the loadings to one, we now directly fix the factor variances and that's an alternative and in many ways equivalent way to identify the model. So let's take a look at that also. The first interesting thing that I would like to point out to you is that the chi-square test of model fit is the exact same. So we get the exact same chi-square statistic 0.165 with one degree of freedom and the exact same p-value. And that's because the model with fixed factor variances is equivalent in terms of its implied covariance and mean structure to the model with fixed loadings and free variances and so therefore the fit does not change or does not differ between the two models because it's really an equivalent way mathematically to identify such a factor model. When we scroll down to the model results, we can now see that the unstandardized factor loadings are now all estimated. So even the loading for Y1 and the loading for Y3 now have an estimate that differs from one and a standard error, a Z statistic and a P value. So those loadings are now estimated and instead the factor variances are no longer estimated. So here you can see that those are now fixed to one. They no longer have a standard error. They no longer have uh, test statistics or P values. And so that's to so say an equivalent way to identify the model. Now, of course, you get different estimates for the unstandardized solution, at least in part, because we now have standardized factors. So therefore, this covariance estimate here between F2 and F1 will differ from the unstandardized solution, because in the unstandardized solution, the factors had variances that were different from one. And so now the variances are one and therefore the covariance is standardized, which means this value now tells you, the, tells you about the factor correlation because now the variables, the latent variables are standardized to variances of one. So this may be a benefit of this approach that now this covariance is more interpretable because it's now equal to a correlation. Of course, um, this is not necessary because you have also the standardized solution STDYX where all variables are standardized and there you find this correlation as well regardless of whether you estimate the model version with fixed loadings or the model version with fixed variances. So it doesn't really matter. One other um, thing to point out is that the standardized solution for this model will be the exact same regardless of whether you select the approach with fixed loadings or the approach with fixed factor variances. So if you compare those two standardized solutions, you will find that there's absolutely no difference in the standardized solution or the R squared. And so therefore, um, when we're interested, for example, in the reliabilities of the factor indicators, which are here provided in terms of R squared values, then we will get the same reliability estimates regardless of whether we fix loadings or fix factor variances. And that's important because that is one type of parameter that is of great interest. And likewise, related to the reliabilities or R squared values are the standardized factor loadings and those also will not differ between the solution with fixed loadings and the solution with fixed factor variances. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned more about how to fix factor variances instead of factor loadings in a factor model and what implications that has and what 
this means. If you like the video, then please don't forget to hit the like button and to subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including links to um, other workshops and videos. And I'll see you next time.